Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. In the last episode, we put an end to the plague bearers that were troubling downtown Los Angeles, and we did a little bit of shopping, a little dancing to celebrate our victory, and now we are uh, investigating the Elizabeth Dane for Prince LaCroix. So we're doing that, and we managed to talk to that cop and convince him to assist us because he thinks we're someone else. Check this out. I just saw a baleen whale. Yeah? So, this is what we're doing. He already gave us a police report. So, that's what's going on. We want to do this without killing anyone as well. Okay, lock picking. Records room. Pick up copy of the ship manifest, which is one of the things that we were supposed to do. Now, all we gotta do is get to the security room. We also gotta check out the uh, the item in question, the Ankar and sarcophagus, for ourselves. Okay, this is where we want to be. He told us the password as well. Reports. Status. Weather. Log. What? Okay. Control. Lighthouse. Thank you. Deck. Cams on. Deck security enabled. No. Deck cams off. Thank you. Unlock doors. All bulkheads open. Okay. Gonna buff my wits and go into log. Ah, five is not enough. What do I need? Six. Of course I need a six. Okay. Let's see. Hacking. I've got ten points. I can put six into that or eight into that. Which would increase my combat defense as well. That would just increase my hacking. So wits would be the better option. Huh. Don't know if I just glitched the game. Okay, no, I didn't. Haha! -ha, making it at six. Antonio Bay. Ten, ten, zero, four. Weather's calm as we head out of Istanbul. Professor Johansson seemed very worried about the safety of the sarcophagus and various other artifacts from his dig, but I assured him all was well. 10-14-04 Rough waters last evening, operations normal, but the crew seems restless. One of the Turks has been telling them ghost stories. I had Lieutenant Stigian take him aside and speak with him. Okay. 10-15-04 Nothing to report, situation normal. 10-17-04 Two of the crew have gone missing, and I fear they may have fallen overboard sometime during the night. No trace of either Lieutenant Ste No trace of either. Lieutenant Stigian has tried to contact their families, but something seems to have gone wrong with the radio. We may have a saboteur on board. The crate holding the sarcophagus seems to have been opened. Okay, 10, 
1904. We have found blood on the upper and lower decks, and it seems that at least three more of the crew are missing. The men are hysterical. I found the Turk in his cabin, curled up into a ball, muttering something indecipherable to himself. Lieutenant Stygian is one of the missing crew, as well as the radio technician. One of the men had a shortwave radio, but all calls for help have gone unanswered. 10 I leave this to whoever may find it. The ship is cursed. May it sink into the crushing depths of Davy Jones's locker before... He's dead. Alright. Now, actually, if I remember, we can be sneaky about this. Deck cams on. And we explored the crime scene. You have successfully completed your task. We did not have to sneak up to the crime scene and risk getting in caught. So we're done. Gonna go ahead and turn that off. Get home and quit. Okay, so we are done here. just going to make our way back out of here. This wasn't so bad. Most of the time I have to try and sneak my way to the coffin itself. But thankfully we did not have to. Because we are a clever vampire and we technically did what the prince asked us. If these doors technically weren't trying to kill us. We're almost done. Boom, just like that. Jump right onto the raft. That got us experience. Done and done. Let's go back to the club, top off our blood as best we can and then talk to the prince simple as that of course we're gonna get assaulted by another loading screen but that's okay man I just I love to think that this game would be so great if they remade it nowadays <laughs> I just I really think it would oh I could probably grab that tire iron and sell it I can <laughs> Make a few cash here or there. So yeah, thanks for, uh, for helping Mercurio. We now have our own little assistant buddy guy. But I want that combat shotgun. I missed you. Did you miss me? Why are you scowling at me? Okay, cool. Thank you. While we're here, let us go into our safe haven. I forgot about that. We might have a new email or a new quest to do. I doubt it, but it might be possible. So we're going to go ahead and just check that out for the time being. We're doing good so far. Experience is up again. I want to get scholarship up so I can increase my persuasion and my research. I also want to raise my uh, presence. Just because that's such a useful ability for combat. It just weakens them so hardcore. Did the... Okay, no. Yes, we got two new emails. Email. Six. Repaid favors. Stop my apartment and you get a chance. I'll set you up. Next. Don't touch the butter. The new extreme sport that's sweeping the nation is now on a limited edition DVD. Watch superstars Iron Will McCain, Brock Dryhands Hines, and Marjorie Mike Davenport as they use every bit of restraint in, the, in their body to not touch the butter. 
one bowl of butter, two contestants, three judges, and a hell of a lot of willpower. To order, log on to www.donttouchthebutter.vtm. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Don't touch the butter. Okay, we've got nothing. Alright. So, we already spoke with Mercurio, but I'm going to go ahead and see if speaking with him right now means that we have access to different weaponry and stuff, now that he's at his apartment. Because the Ithaca is a good shotgun, but a better shotgun would be nicer. Hey, Mercurio. Anything I can do for you tonight? Equipment. Nope. Nothing. Waste of time. You wasted my time, Mercurio. You wasted my time. Okay. Enough about that. Let's get out of here. Gotta go back to the cab. Gotta go back. Alright. Hop in. Sure, why not? Downtown. Okay, unarmed is for other things. Oh, hey, look. Hey, I, I know this might seem creepy and all, but please don't blow me off, okay? Someone told me I could find you here. I mean, I've been looking all over for you since that night. Because I just wanted to... I'm in your debt. I want to help you. I owe you my life, and I feel like I need to repay you. Uh, I almost forgot. I'm Heather. Heather Poe. I'm not wearing you out or anything, am I? That's hard to do these nights. You look much better. I'm glad. Only because of you. What you did for me. Here. I... I got you this. I thought you might be able to use it. I can be useful to you. I'd do anything. Just tell me you'll let me help you. Let me stay with you. Make me feel this way. Let's see. I can tell her to go away. Twice. One would be nicer, and I can be charming to her, or I can be vin like vindictive to her, but still abuse her. Of course, Heather, I'd love for you to stay with me. Really? I promise you won't regret it. I promise. I'll get you money. I'll get you things. Everything. I want to be with you. Okay. 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 I know where you live. I check there first. I'll wait for you at your place. And when you do come back, I'll take care of whatever you want. I'd do anything for you. <laughs> My dear Heather, what, what what did I ever do without you? I'll see you later. So now we literally have our own personal ghoul. Of course. We are vampires, after all. That's just how it is. Could raise Brawl to two and then read my book to increase it to three. Ian and Chief, you back to see Mr. LeCroy again? Yeah, that's right. Yes, he told me to send you up as soon as you came in. Lots of people here to see Mr. LeCroy. Nice guy. He seems a little different, though. You wonder if he's. Ah, uh, that's his business. How's it going, Chuck? Ah, you know, I'm keeping the undesirables out, keeping the innocent safe and secure. I'm the thin blue line that separates the crazies from the hard-working decent folks. Yep, as long as I'm around, Mr. LaCroix's got nothing to worry about. I'm sure he appreciates that you're here to protect him. See ya, Chunk. Alright, go through here. And yet it doesn't detect that I am just loaded for bear in regards to weaponry. That's super amusing to me. I've said all I need to for now. All these other people. Wonder what that was about. 
I don't have time for a monologue. Give me the bullet points of what you saw. Everyone on board was massacred. There weren't any survivors. And the Ankaran sarcophagus. What did you see? There was blood all over the floor. Handprints indicated it was open from within. Open? Let's not jump to conclusions. Give me the manifest in your notes. I'll sort this mess later. You might have noticed when you came in. The parade of malingering molly couples filing at. Yeah, this involves me somehow, doesn't it? Those were the primogen, this city's clan elders. A worrisome bunch devoted first and foremost to the security of their own skin. Which is why they were here. It seems Alistair Grout, a Malkavian primogen, has either forgotten how to answer his phone, or is missing. Each minor problem like a grain of sand, each night I inherit the desert. This Avot's appearance has put the primogen on edge. Grout's mansion is in the Hollywood Hills. I need you to pry Grout out of whatever crack he's crawled into and have him contact us. Certainly. Is that all? Yes, for the moment. You know, your demeanor thus far bears similar characteristics to those that rise to the top of this organization. Stay that course. Thank you, sir. Now, about Grout? Yes, about Grout. As I said, Grout is the Malkavian primogen. His behavior and home are eccentric, to say the least. He's developed a paranoid bent lately, so you may have to check under every bed in the place for him. I have a few questions to ask before I go. I suppose I can spare a few seconds. Let's see, I had some questions about something else. Which is... The Sabbat. Every night you wake up, be thankful you were not sired by one of their kind. Or you would have woken under the ground, forced to claw your way up from the dirt into a brief, bloody, violent existence. Savages. Bloodthirsty, irresponsible heathens. Okay, so, someone else. Yes? Beckett. You've met Beckett? Yes. He did pay me the courtesy of announcing his presence in my city. He's lionized in kindred society. Most. Beckett's the definition of renowned scholar, but he's also a lone wolf, and owes allegiance only to his intellectual pursuits. I'm ready to go see Grout. When we hear from Grout, you may come back. Until then. Oh, and to show my appreciation for your dedicated service to me, I have secured you a haven nearby, in the Skyline Apartment Building. I hope it's to your liking. Thanks. Tell my ghoul to move there, too. We live in Unit 4. So we're going to go ahead and check that place out as well. See, I'm already becoming a pretty solid vampire around here. Got my own ghoul, and just, I'm kicking all sorts of butt, and I'm manipulating people and pulling strings. Okay, no. I think the CDC is actually gone now. For sure. Actually, what I'm going to do before I go to my haven is I'm going to see if uh, Venus won't friggin' pay me finally. Because she owes me money. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Give me the money. The money, right? money's mine! Thank you. Keep it coming. 125? Huh. I used to remember it being more than that, but maybe it just acclimates over time. Or accumulates, not acclimates. But what's going on with me? It's the ooky spooky Halloween cross! Woo! Okay, no, I'll stop that. Okay, we live here now, so they can't shoot at us. <laughs> you didn't say nothing, fella. Okay, see? We now have access to that. And number four. Just take an elevator ride to number four. 
This place is so much better than the dinky little haven that we had in Santa Monica. I mean, gosh. And hey, look, Heather's here already. I'm so glad you're back. I've been waiting here just like you asked. Your place is, um, nice. It may not be much, but it's mine. Is there something I can do for you? Anything. Just ask. There's something you should know before we go on. Oh. Are you married? Is that why you don't want me around? No. You survived because of my blood. I'm a vampire. You are bound to me. What? Uh, you're joking, right? That's like slang for something like catcher or some fetish term, right? Not like a blah, blah, vampire, right? Let's see. <laughs> I'm afraid not. My blood commingles with your own. A term for you is ghoul. No. No, there's no such thing. You're... This isn't funny anymore. Do you want me to leave forever? Or, no. Let's see. Yeah. Do you want me to leave forever to love someone else? No. Please, don't leave. I don't care what you are. Just don't leave me. See, I'm not going anywhere, my pet. Don't worry. What can I do to show my appreciation? Tell me a little. Okay. Wait, well, wait here. Don't worry. I'll be back. And that's it for the time being, because we just ran out of time. That kind of ran a little long. But, hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I've got a ghoul. She now understands her condition a bit more better. And we shall continue on in the next episode. Hope you had fun. Bye-bye for now.